Moi, ciao, buongiorno, salut, bonjour, hey. So today I'm going to talk to you about Italy. I lived there for five months and I just moved back one week ago. So now I can tell you more about the things I noticed in this country. So I might compare it with France because I'm French, but also with Finland because I lived there for one year and I already did that kind of video with Finland. So let's do this. But before that, I wanted to say that I lived in Trento, so in a city in the north of Italy, and I know in all the countries there's always a difference between the north part, the south, and some cities. So what I'm going to say only apply for Trento and not the rest of Italy, okay? So please Italian, don't be mad because I'm going to say some stuff that doesn't apply to the rest of Italy. So now I can start properly. <laughs> First, the teaching way. So I was in Italy for my master degree and I discovered a whole new way to study. It was kind of different from France and very, very different from Finland. So Italian system is really traditional, like it's coming from the 18th centuries and it didn't change from that. Like it's really traditional, very strict, very boring. You just read books and you have to learn those books by heart and you have to just write those books in your exam and that's really really not interesting at all in my opinion just my opinion some people like that but me no because for example in france we are having really theoretical stuff but also we have practical so there is a balance it's okay i, I never liked the french system but still it was better than italy and in finland you were like completely free you were responsible of your own education so if you wanted to learn something you had to search for it and i think it's a good method when you are in a high level of um, studies because soon you will be in the real world and you will have to do that kind of stuff searching the information you need by your own so i think finland was super great and i really like it and also I think this is a very demanding system because you have to read like, it's not small books, it's big books. It's like two, three, four hundred pages the book and then you have to add the slide from the teacher and the notes you took during the, the semester. So the amount of things you have to learn, it's huge, like really huge. So it's super demanding for you to learn all the stuff and you're supposed to start learning since the beginning of the semester until the end. But because you have also team project, it's impossible because those team projects are taking too much time for you. So you don't have the time to start learning step by step. So in the end, you end up like one week before all the exam to try to learn like 400 pages, 400 pages per courses and it's awful it's a mess so in italy there are different sessions you can attend to pass the exam in my master degree there were three sessions you have the right to reject a grade it means you can pass for example the first session and you have a grade and you don't like it it's like maybe 20 over 30 and you don't like it you think you can do better so you can reject it and you can apply to the second or third session in order to pass again the exam and to have a better grade this is really uncommon for me because in France you have only one session, at least for me, because I was doing apprenticeship, so I was working at the same time that I was studying. So I couldn't fail because I was bound with a contract with a company, so I didn't have the possibility to fail, I had to succeed. So for me it was normal to do just only one exam to, and that was it. I think it creates a lot of competition within Italians because you want to have the best grade as possible. So everybody is like, I don't know, there is a kind of competition and I don't really like the spirit of Italian student for that because it's really competitive and it's not very healthy. So I don't know, but it's like this in Italy. So I really, 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 really didn't like it because I, was, I don't think it's really rewarding for a student because you don't feel like you learned something really. I think it's super boring and I'm happy it's over and I will never study again in Italy and I really don't recommend people like me, people that like, I don't know, not so much classes or that like to do practical stuff, very thing that you can use in the real life, don't go to Italy, at least not for the master I did, not for business because 
I don't think it's really interesting. Second, the weather. So Trento is surrounded by mountains and the weather is like changing from a day to another. It can be super sunny and then the day after it's like raining, it's hell and the day after it's sunny again. So it made me think a lot of Finland because Finland was like this at some point. Um, during, I think it was during April, it was like this, it was sunny, then raining, then snowing and then melting and then grey, there was a the long drink weather, like it was very changing a lot and in Italy it was the same. Uh, in Trento we only had one day of snow and I was super sad about that. I was really happy for the snow but of course it was during my exam so I couldn't really enjoy the snow but I was sad about that. But in the south of France where I come from we don't have snow at all and the weather is always really nice like shiny and sometimes raining in autumn and spring but it's like pretty warm here so yeah Toronto was a bit colder but it was okay and I know that in Finland also the weather was super hot for the season and they didn't have so much snow at least in the south where I was living in Finland yeah I think the global warming is heating hard our planet right now and you can see it with the meteo and the change in the weather and yeah i think that's super sad number three the trash i was really surprised in italy it was super clean because last time i went to italy i went to roma and in roma they have a lot of issues with trash but in Trento it was super super clean and i think Trento is the most sustainable city in italy so they are like um, separating trash very carefully and it's very important. So it's very nice I think to see that the streets were super clean and the trash also and like they were thinking in an uh, environmentally friendly way and I think it's super great because in France we are far away from this and yeah I was living in Finland last year so I was used to walk around very very clean street and um, separating trash and doing all those stuff very good for the planet and then I came back to France for the summer and I was like yeah this is trash <laughs> and it's not so clean and in the street you have like chewing gums and the part of the cigarettes everywhere because French are smoking a lot more than in Finland and also in Italy they don't smoke so much I think but it's pretty clean and yeah I really enjoy that. Number four the living cost. So living in Italy wasn't so costly. I think it was kind of the same than France, than south of France, but maybe less expensive on some projects. I think it's okay, but of course if you compare it with Finland, Finland was more than two times or three times more expensive than France. So Finland it was super expensive, but Italy is, I think is less expensive than south of France. So it's okay, the living cost was more or less okay, but I was living in the north part, so the north part is more expensive than in the south. So yeah, when I went to Roma, it was less expensive than in Trento, but still Trento was a bit less expensive than France. So I was pleased with this. <laughs> Number five, the grocery shop. So in Italy, they have different kinds of shops. They are the hard discounter and then the normal one and the less expensive and the more expensive one. But mainly in all the stores, you have a huge part dedicated to mozzarella, parmigiani, and that's basically the only cheese they have. And then you have a huge part for prosciutto, speck, and all the ham. And then there is always a huge part just for pasta. So there are different kinds of pasta and you have like a huge collection of them and you're like, I don't know what to do. And don't say to an Italian, it's just pasta because all the pasta are different for you to know that <laughs> goat cheese is my heaven it's the thing i love the most in the whole planet with bread i think i'm a cliche living cliche i'm sorry but <laughs> that's true and i spent two months searching in all the grocery shop in Trento to search for goat cheese france is pretty close to Italy and still they didn't have any goat cheese and I was like shocked. The, the only French cheese they really had was Emmental and Brie. And by the way, they were, they were putting Brie on pizza and I'm like, what the hell? Why you don't put goat cheese? It's so much better than Brie. 
So because we are talking about grocery shop, we're going to stay in the same subject with the number six, the food. So basically, I always believe that saying Italians are eating only pasta and pizza was a cliche and I never really believe in it. But then I moved in Italy and then I discovered that wasn't actually a cliche, that was real life. Yes, they are eating pasta at least every day and they have it like it's, uh, I don't know how to explain, but for us, for example, in France, we have bread at every meal, but for Italians, Imagine they replace bread with pasta. I mean, for them, it's really normal to have it. So for example, when I, the first time I went to the cafeteria, the school cafeteria, where you have like the typical meal for the student that you pay not so expensive, uh, they are giving you like pasta, you have to choose. So you have pasta with nothing, pasta bolognese, you have pasta with, I don't know, with uh, tuna, uh, you have pasta with cream. So you have to choose pasta and then you can choose meat or fish and then you can choose potatoes, vegetables. And so every time you have pasta is automatically included as a part of your, of your dish. But for us in France, pasta is a dish. You can't eat it like with something more. Also the pizza. I don't know if you saw like the vlogs I did and I ate a lot of pizza, but that was reality. I just ate a lot of pizza because it's basically the only thing you can eat or you can find easily and everywhere and it's easy. And I don't know, in Italy, it's super normal to eat a lot of pizza. So some Italians are like, no, I can't eat two more than two times uh, a week eat pizza. But some others are like, I don't care. They can eat it like five times a week or something like this. It depends on all the people. But since I came back from Italy, I'm like, I don't want to see any Italian food forever, please. <laughs> because for five months I ate only pastas and pizza and I tried to eat other stuff also for sure, but it was basically my alimentation was like this. But yeah, that's not a cliche, that's reality. <laughs> and now after talking about food, we can talk about the number seven, the restaurant. In Trento, they were not so diverse restaurants. Basically, it was only Italian restaurant. But I think it's something common to all Italy. I'm not sure I don't want to say to mistake, but I think it is for the place I, I visited. Basically, you have only Italian restaurant, but of course, because it's the best food ever. But I think if you go to France or if you go to Finland, for example, you don't have so many traditional Finnish or French restaurant. I think the typical French restaurant you can find like more in Paris than across France, except like creperie maybe. It's something you can find everywhere, but we don't have like really a lot of typical food. But in Italy, you have a lot of Italian restaurants. Also something really nice about the restaurant is the aperitivo. It made me think of a mix between the French culture and the Spanish one because Spanish are doing tapas and French are doing apero. So it was a mix and that's really nice when you're going to a place and you're taking a drink just to, I don't know, to, to have a, a break after the day and you just take a drink and then the restaurant is giving you food and who say no to food? I mean, this is food. So I really like that. <laughs> Number eight. The toilet. So because in my video uh, about Finland, I talked about the toilet. I think it was interesting to talk also about the toilet in Italy. So the toilet in Italy are pretty the same than in France or than in Finland. In Finland, uh, I don't know if you remembered, but in Finland they have a um, douchette, like a small shower you can use like directly next to the, the toilet so you can clean yourself. And in Italy, you have the normal toilet like in France and in Finland but you have a bidet. The bidet is French, it's come from France and it's a French thing, but we are not using it so much. I have one at my, my parents' place and you can only find it in the old houses, I think, because in the new ones you don't have the bidet, but it's a French thing first, but the Italians are using it more than the French one. So they are having it in all the places. You have like all the bathroom, you have a bidet. So they use it also to wash themselves. But I think the, um, the douchette in Finland is more convenient because you don't have to move. <laughs> like you can do it above, like, I don't know how to explain, but you understand me. Like you don't have to move from a place to another to clean. You just have to take the douchette and don't, don't move. Number nine. 
the drinking. I discovered that during the first gathering parties I had in Italy is that Italians are drinking wine. But I mean, I'm French, we are drinking wine too, but Italians are drinking wine when they are gathering, before going to the nightclub, before going out. And we French don't do that so much. First, it's normal to have wine during uh, a meal and also when you're doing apéro, always. If you know you're going out, usually you drink strong alcohol. You drink, for my part, usually we were drinking vodka, but there is whiskey and rum and it depends on all the people, but usually we are drinking strong alcohol before going out. Number 10, the last one, the people. I don't want to be mean and I don't want to to, to hurt anybody, but sorry for the Italians watching this. But I think Italians, most of the Italians, there are some exceptions, of course, but most of the Italians are very traditional and very closed mind. Like, I think it's hard sometimes to have discussion with Italians because they are very judgmental because the Italian way is always the best way. But after talking with Italians, they were telling me, yeah, but we are also very religious because we we have the Vatican, for example. They, that's why they have history and they are like very traditional and sometimes they are closed mind. And French people are known to be very proud people about their culture, about their country, their food and everything. But Italians are way worst. So Italians are very, very proud of the food, but I think it's too much. I mean, I'm French and we are known for our food, but I'm not so proud. I mean, this is food, this is normal, and I'm not judging people if they are eating French food, but in a different way or they don't like it. I'm like shocked sometimes because, for example, people that doesn't like goat cheese, I'm like, this is impossible. <laughs> but I mean, it's okay. I, I'm not judging at all. I know there are plenty of tastes in the nature so it's normal but for italians there is i told you there is only one way and it's the italian way and it's the right way so sometimes it's super annoying to have a conversation with them about food mainly i respect the fact that italians and other people are not doing the same than me but italians doesn't respect that at all uh, there are different topics you can talk with a french that you couldn't really talk about with um, an italian and also a Finnish, for example, I think you can talk about more stuff with an Italian than a Finnish for sure. But yeah, I think Italy, Italians are very traditional, too competitive and uh, sometimes close minded and yeah, too traditional in some ways. But nevertheless, I still like Italians, but yeah, I discover a mentality I wasn't expecting to see. I was expecting like, I don't know, kind of the same than France, in fact, because I don't see Italy so much different than France. But then it is, it's more traditional, let's say. There is something I'm really proud of is that France is a country where we can do a lot of things, in fact. Like really, we can, we can go out, we can party, we can drink, we can have sex, we can enjoy life. And I think it's, yeah, it's something super normal for us to talk about sex for example and i think mm, france is also known because we are very free about sex and that's why we have a lot of cheaters <laughs> we tend to judge but then we tend to talk also because our country our history is mainly based on revolution fighting for what you want and expressing yourself so after living five months in italy now i'm turning the page to move on in a new chapter in my life so it was a nice experience, I'm happy I lived it, but yeah, it was very, very stressful for me during that period because I was uh, working a lot for my master degree. I didn't enjoy so much uh, living in Italy, sadly, because of the master degree, but I think Italy is a beautiful country to travel for sure, but I wouldn't go back there to live for sure, but for traveling, yes, because this country is full of history and the places, the cities are amazing and the landscapes are beautiful. And yeah, you can learn a lot if you're going to travel in Italy. So this was my experience with Italy. And now I'm looking forward to see what would happen next in my life. But until then, see you in another video. I don't know when it will be a surprise for you and for me. See you. 
Bye. Adios. Salut les potes. Ciao.